city managers estimate the cost of 24 hours of arson at a quarter billion dollars. 1992, 21 years after Ralph Bunch's passing, new riots break out in the south central section of Los Angeles, California, in the wake of police violence against a black man named Rodney King. It is the neighborhood in which the teenager Ralph Bunch had grown up. Through the media, Americans soon became aware of the many other conflicts smoldering beneath the surface of this city of angels, besides those caused by police violence against people of color. Somehow, in the midst of the Rodney King riots in Los Angeles, the leaders of two rival street gangs, the Crips and Bloods, do an unusual thing they call a truce. We had individuals from Watts orchestrating negotiations between war and factions right within the mix of... One of the gang members charged with drafting the truce document ends up at the Ralph Bunch Collection in the Special Collections Library of UCLA. He is sent there by an officer in the crypts. The person who wrote, who, who drafted that same Israel and Egypt, uh, a core piece of court, was a, a, a resident from Watts, <laughs> and it was just, it blew me off my feet. They discovered in doing some research the truce agreement that Bunch had drafted uh, to end the Palestinian conflict and used that as a model for their own truce, and only later, after it was used as a model, discovered that it was a black man, and not only a black man, but one from South Central Los Angeles who had gone to Jefferson High School who had drafted this armistice. Um, I know his name because I read it through the, the Jet magazine. It was an issue that came out uh, back in 93. I forgot what month it was because I was in Cleveland, Ohio when I was watching, when I was, when I was flipping through it. And I flipped through it and I read it. It was talking about the truce and the peace accord. And, and they said Ralph Bunch, and they said he was originated from Watts. And you know what I'm saying, it, it, it grew like a, uh, I, I had like a chill that, cut it, that came over my body. And I thought, you know, like, Man, is this a coincidence, is this a dream, or is it, is it supposed to happen like this? And I mean, it was just, you know, just a shock. And it's like, uh, I've been participating in this every year since it started. Long before these cameras came out here, I was one of the ones sitting in the room with all these different negotiations. And it's thanks to people like these brothers up here and these sisters up here that your children will have a greater chance at playing in their yard without getting struck by a bullet from a drive-by. You know. It is interesting to note that the pattern of conflict that Ralph Bunch was dealing with was uh, at a visceral and bloody level uh, that uh, compares in interesting and surprising ways with the gang warfare. In fact, when uh, Ralph Bunch's predecessor was killed, uh, when Count Bernadotte was killed, it was by, many think it was by a group called the Stern Gang, interestingly enough. The term gang is involved in the issue at Ralph Bunch's time, and now we have a different group of gangs accomplishing different things who realize that they too must come to terms with each other. Can't nobody stop this war but us. The interesting thing about that truce uh, is that it delves into the sort of um, historically continued patterns of conflict that are among the most intractable. One of the reasons that uh, the bloodshed in Bosnia-Herzegovina and the former Yugoslavia has been so atrocious is that there are historical debts that are being paid that there are vendettas that are being played out. And the reason that gang warfare in Los Angeles has reached the, the level, had reached the level of evil that it had reached before the truce was that it was a continuing set of vendettas and, and efforts to seek revenge, uh, to get back at those who had done wrong. So that in that sense, there is the, the incentives of those who are in conflict is actually quite similar. So we'll dedicate this truce to Ralph Bunch, because this is his reality. <laughs>